Aaron Stafford, everybody. And just a reminder, comedians, if you want to host next week, make sure you put your name in that. Ladies and gentlemen, are you having a good time so far tonight? We've had a lot of comedians and I know we've got five more. And I know the next comedian is the one most of you have been waiting for. But following Steve, we do have four more really funny guys, so please, please stick around and check them out, especially your headliner, the uh, great Heath Walkemeyer. Yes. And now, a lot of people, I have heard the theory out there that a lot of cool people are just named Steve. There's Steve McQueen. Steve Maroney. And of course, Steve Yes, got it! Now, I have to admit, I, I, I really did have a uh, really spectacular opening plan for you tonight, but uh, I've been um, feeling sick for the last couple days. Aww. I've had this really bad cold, and um, really, when I, I start exerting myself, um, I start coughing, and, and I really didn't think you'd want me to spend my time up here uh, coughing up a lung. Well, I know some of you out here, I won't. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't go with that one. Um, but uh, in any case, I, uh, I'm not a doctor, but I, I, I do play one sometimes when I fantasize. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I really think I got the RVW virus. That's a Rip Van Winkle virus. Because all I've wanted to do for the last five days is sleep. I slept on the couch and in my bed Saturday and Sunday. Now. Being the good employee that I am, I showed up for work on Monday morning. And it, it didn't have anything to do with the fact that I would have lost my holiday pay from Thursday and Friday. Really, it was because I am a dedicated employee. Now, however, I, I just couldn't make it through the day, and so I left early Monday afternoon. And I got home, and uh, I got into my comfy stuff, and, and I took a shot of NyQuil, and I rubbed my chest with mentholatum, and I got my cup of water, and I went to bed. This is around 2 o'clock, and uh, I woke up at 3.30, Tuesday. <laughs> I was in bed for 25 and a half hours. It was crazy. But when I woke up, it was like 3.30. I thought, well, I slept for an hour and a half. I feel pretty good, right? It wasn't until later on that evening I realized it was Tuesday and not Monday. And then it all started coming back to me, and I realized that those dreams I was having about going downstairs into the kitchen, taking a shot of NyQuil, rubbing my chest with methylatum, and getting my water, and going back to bed, they weren't dreams. They were real. And of course, that really answered the question why I had a pee so bad after sleeping for an hour and a half. <laughs> this is the craziest thing I've ever had in my life. So, the worst part of it is, is that I, I got up at 3.30 and I went down to the kitchen. Of course, I took my shot of NyQuil, rubbed my chest with mentholatum, I got my cup of water and I laid down on the couch and I slept till 10 o'clock that night. <laughs> Only to get up, go into the kitchen, take my shot of NyQuil, rub my chest with mentholatum, <laughs> and go to bed, which I slept till one o'clock the next day. This is the craziest thing I've ever had. So, um, if I bomb tonight, I'm gonna blame it on the cold and not with my lack of um, ability. All right, so really this is the reason why I came here tonight. Um, with my shows, um, I don't know if you saw the last one, but I always have a message to deliver to you guys, and I have another message to deliver to you free tonight. And my sister's out there, and she told me to stand still because she said when I walk all around the stage, I, I look nervous. So, I love you, Pat, but it ain't working. Now, you're on my list. In any case, um, I, uh, a couple months ago, a very, very good friend of mine and I were talking, and she's here tonight, 
which I do appreciate. And um, we were talking about one of my previous relationships. And of course, I mean, would you expect anything else from me, right? Um, and she was asking me to describe this relationship, and it was, it, it, to me, it was a very difficult relationship. And really, I think it's the reason why now I'm having a problem really get settling into another relationship because of all the problems that I had. And um, to be honest with you, um, it was very difficult for me to explain. And a couple days later, I was sitting at home, and I was sitting there thinking, well, how could I explain that particular relationship? And so I came up with an analogy, okay? And what I'm going to do tonight is I am going to um, compare a relationship to a job, all right? Um, we've all been through relationships. We've all had jobs, right? So I think you guys are going to be able to appreciate this. Or not. I don't care. Because you didn't pay anything to get in, so who cares, right? So, um, for you tonight, I have a little thing up here. And it's a little reference sheet for you to follow along with. And for you people over there that can't see it, well, move. <laughs> Alright, I'll do my best here. And in, in any case, this, this will help you follow along. Now, I realize that some of you can't read fast, so when I was typing this out, I typed it really slow. Okay? <laughs> and here's my reference sheet. And, and with my story, an interview equals a date, a job equals a relationship, um, incentives equal, well, I'm trying to keep this PG-13, okay, because my kids are over here. Now, it's a three-letter word that rhymes with Rex, and it starts with the letter S, as in sex. <laughs> oh. um, boss equals significant other, in this case my girlfriend that I was with. Staff equals my kids, and uh, the one-on-ones, well that's x-rated stuff, and I am not going to sit up here and orally explain to you guys the possible situations and positions that this could really refer to, okay? But before I go any further, once again, I gotta thank my friends, my family, and my relatives for all coming out here tonight. You guys are great, really. I am blessed, really. Thank you so much. All right, in any case, picture this, okay? There's a job out there that you really like to have, and there's a boss, you know what I mean, that you really like to work for, okay? And so um, you, you apply for the job, and of course to no avail, but finally your resume gets accepted, okay? And you have your very first interview, okay? And then that leads to another interview, which leads to another interview. And finally you get the call, you got the job, right? And you're ecstatic because you think this is the best job you've ever had in your life. This is gonna be the one that's gonna take you into retirement and beyond, okay? So you get the job. Day one, you hit the ground running, and you're working really hard for the boss. You're giving the boss everything you possibly can. The boss is really excited about all your work. And believe me, there's a lot of one-on-ones, all right? Just to get you oriented and acclimated to each other so you know how to you know, deal with each other, okay? And as time goes on, things are pretty good, but all of a sudden you start learning a little more about your boss, okay? And you start to question yourself. But the boss continues to show, throw you these incentives, okay? And you forget about the problems that you're having. And it seems that through this process that you're, you're always trying to make the boss happy, right? And so you start taking on things that the boss doesn't want to do, okay? And then you take on more things that the boss wants to do, try to clear the boss's plate, keep the bosses happy, right? That's basically what we want to do in the job, right? Well, then all of a sudden you're working overtime, you're dissing your family and friends so that you can spend more time with the boss. You're giving up hobbies. And the boss even convinces you that your drinking outside of work is causing an issue with your job. So you quit drinking. If that's not the nominee for employee of the year, I don't know what that is. Okay? Now it always seems that the budget always seems to come up every now and then, right? And the boss wants to move out of this rental corporate headquarters, okay? And to this purchase Taj Mahal of the corporate office, okay? And you try to explain to the boss that you're still obligated under contract that you broke with your previous employer. <laughs> pay for the staff. Well, the boss doesn't like that, and usually those conversations end up in a bad way. And then, 
it, it always seems that you're always doing something that the boss doesn't like, okay? And, yeah, I know. Can you believe it? Me. Not you! Not me. Never. And so, um, you, you correct the issue, okay? But then there seems to be another issue, and you work through that, and you correct that issue, and then there's another issue, and another issue, and another issue, and you're constantly trying to revamp yourself to make the boss happy. Of course, you're frustrated, but the boss continues to throw you these incentives, and you forget the fact that you're frustrated. <laughs> and you so you stick with the job, okay? It's kind of like... That, right? So anyways, um, of course then, there's the staff. The boss is always uptight about the staff. Your staff does this, your staff does that, okay? Well, that makes things even more frustrating. And then, finally, things come, go along, and you continue to stay because of the incentives and the one-on-ones, okay? And it finally comes to payday, all right? And one payday comes along, and you get the paycheck, and you open up the envelope, and you look at it, and the envelope on the check, it's blank, all right? So you go to the boss and you, you ask for an explanation. And of course, the boss responds to you like, um, well, you're really not giving me what I want. You're not like, working out like I thought you would. Yeah, so now, in that case, your frustration turns to anger, right? And you realize that you can't punch the boss in the head like you really like to. So luckily, you calm down. And to be honest with you, I can't work under those circumstances. So I left the job. Really? Yes, I did. So anyways, now me and the boss have tried to reconcile a couple different times, and of course that didn't work out, okay? So um, that's definitely a, a job I'll, I'll never look for again. Now, in staying with this theme of a relationship like a job, I can tell you that I'm currently still unemployed. <laughs> I am actively looking for another job. I get online and I check the classifieds every night. I get my resume out there. And to be honest with you, I've really had some interviews. And some of the jobs I was really interested in. But obviously they're giving those jobs to other people because I never got the call. Now, there were a few jobs where I went to the interview, and of course the interview didn't match what I saw in the classified, so I got the hell out of that. And um, I am um, actively collecting unemployment from my friends and my family, which is okay, okay, but it's not the 100% paycheck that I'm looking for with the incentives, all right? So, um, but I'm cool with that, and, and I realize that one day, I will find the job of my dreams, Aww. and I will work happily ever after. Aww. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's true, I believe it. Don't bump the worst my bubble, man. Yeah, I did. In any case, um, before I go, um, there's one more thing. Oh, God. A very good friend of mine. Oh, my God is celebrating her 21st birthday tonight. Oh. First day. And so, I want everybody out here to buy Christy a drink. I want you to get her sloshed and drunk. I want to see her praying to the porcelain god tomorrow on Facebook. All right. Now don't worry about it because she's off tomorrow, so she can be sick. There we go. Right. So, as I go, I want everybody here to join me in singing happy birthday Woo! to Christy. Are you ready? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Christy. Happy birthday to you. For Stevie Scott, and ladies and gentlemen, we still have.
have some great comedians for you, so please stick around and get.